Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 20th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. Our guests today are the John Richards from over the sea in London Way, or south of London. How the Uh, devil are you? Doing well. Devil is too, I guess. Uh, Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. It's early. How are you there? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also be talking about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? I was born an atheist, and so were you too. But that's going to be a hot topic for a lot of people. It's going to probably involve a lot of semantics and clarification of what we mean by terms. But I think in the most commonsensical sense, it's the most obvious thing in the world. And we'll get into it. But before we do, how about we throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for a weekly invocation. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, El Dante, be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Ramen. I love how it's just some carbs because you do need yeah. some carbs. It's always good. I went to a birthday party mm. last week or yesterday. I went to a birthday party just yesterday and had some fun eating some carbs. They did give me a box of pizza afterwards, and I'll work that off later on this week. But it's good to have a little bit of treats now and then. Your lo- your brain loves it. Your brain's like, oh, carbs, let's go. And then four hours later, it's like, why'd you do this to us? Why'd you do this to us? <laughs> Larry, there, Doubter 5, how you been since last week? It's good to see you again. Oh, doing pretty well. Uh, we had our Thanksgiving yesterday. Nice. It was great. Doing it a little early uh, because our, our kid is uh, flying the coop next week for uh, parts unknown. And uh, we wanted to have it with her and her boyfriend before they left. Parts uh, unknown, what are they doing? Are they like motorcycle riding into the sunset? Like what's No, going she's going to visit him at his, his location. Ah, uh, which okay. is in like Europe. Oh, so, shoot. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to get together and have it before they left. So it was all well, good. Well, good. It's for been you guys. very cold. So I have not been riding. Still playing games, though, of course. Okay. It's been very cold here, too. I'm still playing disc golf. I don't care about the, the time change. I want to get outside. I love being outside with friends. But yes, it's not a fun time. It's not as fun. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> unless if you have a, like a really, really uh, high tolerance for pain and being chilly. Uh, Dread Pirate, listen, I know it's bright and sunny in Canada right now. It's just nothing but like tropical winds and weathers. Uh, do you still have time to go outside at all? Well, it's uh, it's minus 14 out here. So um, <laughs> it's a wee chilly. Wow. Uh, and that's Celsius, of course, not the uh, Fahrenheit <laughs> oh, uh, minus 14. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, no, it's it's pretty cold and we've got snow on the ground. And uh, uh, it's, you know, it's not quite light. Uh, of course, it's uh, 7.06 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time here. So, um, yeah. Jeez. I don't even have my breakfast in me yet. Oh man, man! Wow, yeah. You, ha- you can't, you can't be Canadian unless we have like a big hairy chest full of hair, right? Just like uh, <laughs> fourteen degrees negative Celsius. We and, got this. We and the lumber jack axe in your right hand, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my blue ox that. in the back. Right. <laughs> yeah. We say sorry because we're that manly. We're that calm. That's why. <laughs> All right. Yeah. John, no. <laughs> I'm I'm going to be the next victim for stereotyping, am I? 
All right, go for it. Go for it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll save you it and just ask you, Jeremy. How are you? How are you? How are things? <laughs> well, everything's fine here. We yeah. don't have snow. I can't remember when I last saw snow, but I photographed it because it was on the. We've got a chalet in the garden, you know, one of these wooden structures, and there was about that much snow on the roof, and it was gone by eleven o'clock. So. That's, I can't remember when it was, wow. but that's the last evidence we've got of any snow here. So don't believe all the lies put out by Hollywood about the weather in the UK. Not bad. You know, I do have a, a backdoor balcony and it was, it wasn't snowing, but there's frost on the ground right now. And my cat has the ability to open up doors and handles as he wants to. And I forgot to lock the deadbolt. So at night he comes up, he hangs on the door. He opens up the door to the back balcony, hangs out there for a little bit, says it's cold, comes back in. And this morning he's like cuddled up next to me. And I'm like, this is the cutest thing ever. Also, why is it 20 degrees in my house right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why am I absolutely freezing? And so like yeah, right. it's that whole thing of like, get off what the hell's going on it's super dry my lips are chapped i'm like everything's like super frigid and cold and my back door is just billowing in the wind i got stink bugs coming inside oh, all, no. all night long so yeah i have a lot of cleaning up to do beyond that but so the, the next, dead thing, the next yeah. thing is to teach the cat to shut the door right <laughs> right right some humil uh, some some basic housekeeping would be good guys yep. the, the problem is is you know you can teach your cat a lot of things but you don't have to teach your cat to be an atheist isn't that great? Because it's almost as if he was an atheist by default. And in very similar ways, humanity has the same, uh, I would say, privilege or opportunity to be born without religious dogma. And that's something that we shouldn't overlook. Think about how amazing it is right now that every human being that's born doesn't have to recite scripture uh, out of the womb or deal with the idea of well, I'm the chosen people and those aren't the chosen people or know exactly which God they have to worship. In fact, they don't have to worship any God. That's something that's ingrained in them. It's taught to them. It's indoctrinated to them while they're innocent and young. And yeah. I want to talk about that in a show-like format where we discuss, is it actually true that all babies are born atheists? Um, I have a beginning topic presented to us from Reddit. Um, this is an ongoing conversation right now, if you want to check it out. Uh, the title of the page is All Babies Are Born Atheists. It's written by Birdie Dreamer, and he says, or she says, every human born has been an atheist because we all have been born lacking belief in a God. No baby nor toddler can understand the concept of a God, let alone believe in it. It isn't something we know or understand instinctually. We must be indoctrinated to believe. And even then, many of us still don't believe. Atheism exists in a time of innocence, and it's that innocence and purity that adults so often admire in toddlers and infants as they coexist with their atheism. Atheism is innate and easy for children to understand. In fact, it requires no education at all. Atheism is simplicity with which religions can't compete. Atheists require no study, no rituals, no belief in the supernatural. We have only one condition for membership a lack of belief in gods or gods. It's so simple and natural that all children are born atheists. I want a round table thought on what is what you guys think about that. Dred, what do you think? Well, I, you know, I'd have to push back against that just a wee bit because uh, atheism isn't just a disbelief in all gods. It's a lack of evidence to support or justify a belief in a god. And I'd further say that um, one can be atheistic to the Christian God and not to the flying spaghetti monster. I mean, it's just the way you look at it. So um, we're all atheists. We're all born atheists. I agree with that. But uh, we all continue to be atheists insofar as we don't believe in all gods. We only believe in the gods that we deem, deem to have enough evidence to justify the belief. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna to have to marinate on that a little bit. So you're saying yes, you are born an atheist. <laughs> you are born an atheist, but even when you you could be presented with a God claim that's so mundane that you can <laughs> believe it, but you would be atheistic to other gods at the same time yeah. too. Yeah. So I'm I'm atheistic to uh, the Sikh religion because I don't have evidence to support. A belief in those gods 
but I could be a Christian and believe in my God. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because yeah. Christians because do... I believe I have evidence that supports or justifies my belief mm. in whatever God I happen to believe in, mm. while being atheistic to all other gods because there is no evidence for them. So well, what we you're do... saying is we're all atheists. It's no precisely what I'm saying. Mm. Yes, we're, yeah, we yeah, all to some yeah, degree. To, to at least the majority of gods that are out there, except atheists are just one more god than most people. Correct. Yeah. Atheist, tr- atheists who claim themselves, themselves to be atheists uh, have just taken that one additional step to say they don't believe or have evidence for any gods. Right, right. It's not as foreign as a concept is basically what you're saying. Like the term right. atheist. Not only are all babies it, but most people are. And there's very few true pan theists out there that like leave it correct God that's out there in fact i'd say there are no pantheists no <laughs> welcome to next week's show anyway Dara <laughs> five. Dara five, what do you think about the idea of all babies being... that was a really great and thoughtful uh take on that dread i appreciate that thank uh, you doubt or five what do you think about well, the idea yeah since atheism things? means that you are without a, a belief in god or mm-hmm. without god as far as beliefs go and I would say it's true. You know, all, we're all born atheists. Uh, we have to be indoctrinated uh, into a God belief before, mm. uh, you know, we believe before we're a theist, as it were. Um, and it's easy to, to prove because if, you know, there are people out there saying, no, 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 we we're born believing in God. Then why did you have to tell your children about God and teach right. them about their religion? Right. I have, I have a they, friend. Oh, go I, have a, I have a friend who I play tennis with, and he always brings up religion every single time because he knows I'm an atheist. So he has mm-hmm. to like bring it up every single conversation. And his conversations always lead to, and I can't wait to start a family. He wants 13 kids. He's one of those guys. He, mm-hmm. can, he can't wait to start a family because he wants to teach all of them about God. And I keep asking him, I, I keep poking at that idea. But like, one, why do you have to teach your kids God if God's real? Shouldn't one, you already believe that we're not born atheists. He told me that to my face. So like, why do you have to go out of your way to teach your kids about God? It, shouldn't that be evidentiary? Like, shouldn't that be instilled in them? Don't they already have yep, the word of God birth, in them? Right. Mm-hmm. right. So like, what's this whole teaching thing? What's this whole Bible school? What's this whole church thing? Like, right. what's going on there? It's, there's yeah. a lot of disconnections. What else can you say? Yeah. In fact, in fact, it's, it's, it's not only teaching them about their God, it's teaching them about the concept of faith mm. and and if you uh you know consider the uh hebrews 11 1 where it says faith is the belief in things hoped for and evidence of things unseen yeah that really is something you have to teach people in order for them to believe in a god in the first place so it's actually taking away any um impetus towards rational thought and reason and evidence and uh experiment uh taking all that away mm. and just say hey we've got this whole new concept for you it's faith right and just take my word for it right mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, john it sounded like you're, you're already wiping your head he's just like i can't wait to talk <laughs> go on ahead john you can well, take any talk if you want we've just we've just commissioned some pull-up banners you know the things you have uh, at, at um, events and one of the slogans that we're putting on there is atheism is our birthright. Right. Mm. Because yeah, I like it. I can't disagree with anything that's been said so far, except perhaps uh, dread. You know, I, I do believe that uh, spaghetti exists. But <laughs> <laughs> as to whether as to whether it's a godly monster, I, I have my doubts. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, I've got a couple of quotes here that I might throw in. Do you want them now or do you want them dispersed later throughout let's the get, show? Let's get the first one out. I love it. Let's get some quotes. Okay, Give me well, it in your best Englishy accent possible. That's what we all sign up for. It's the reason why you're on the show. <laughs> I've been accused of sounding a bit mid-Atlantic, you know, because... Really? Yeah. No, it depends who you speak to, but I don't oh, speak... Oh, I totally hear it. Yes. Yeah. So... For people who don't know, Mid Atlantic Frasier. If you ever seen that show Frasier, that's kind of kind of close to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But ah. it's only yeah, it's yeah. only the it's only the the tone of the voice. It's not the accent. It's like you have 
it's the voice that comes out of here. It's just a little bit uh, drawn out, <laughs> but it's not the accent that's on top of it. It's two different things. Mid Atlantic people just talk. Well, I have the I have that voice every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before I have my first coffee. That's right. Morning, morning phlegm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Continue, continue. Well, I, I don't, I don't sound like the royals or the nobles, so I'm, mm. I'm not quite as posh as some people in my part of the world. Mm. So I, here's the first quote. Then it's Ricky Gervais. Ooh. He said, basically, you deny one less god than I do. I don't believe in two thousand nine hundred ninety-nine gods, and oh, sorry, you don't believe in two thousand nine hundred ninety-nine gods. And I don't believe in just one more. Right. Correct. That's it. You know, yeah. it, it, and that's the point Dredd was making earlier, I believe. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It, and the great thing is, it, it takes a comedian to really make the best concise quotes for this particular era. You know, yeah. I think Ricky Gervais is like a bastion of really great, concise, well made yeah. points yeah. on a lot of different things, including. Yeah. Uh, his point on science, and this is just a little bit of a tangent, but he says, like, if you take all the holy books and delete them from history and you wait a thousand years on the same trend that we're on right now, you're going to end up with a thousand other new holy books that all mm -hmm. say very rapidly different things, completely different from each other. However, if you mm -hmm. take all the science literature, every single science proof and, and document and piece of evidence and destroy it and remove it from human culture, in another thousand years, you're going to have the exact same science. The units might be yeah. made differently. The, the symbols might look different, but all the relationships are identical to the point where we'd yeah. be able to translate immediately all the new discoveries that were made. That's, yeah, yeah. That is a very telling thing. Yeah, yeah. E will still equal MC squared. Right, and I did not phrase that properly as, as Ricky Gervais did, but it's a very yeah. meaningful, concise point to be made that mm. one group is randomly pulling things together and one's looking at an objective thing and getting closer to it, which is the truth. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I greatly admire comedians because they have to be such mm -hmm. good communicators. They only have a few minutes to get through to our brains and right. and and press our tickle buttons. Right. So they, yeah. they have to be very concise. Yes, yeah. tickle buttons. All right. <laughs> you can tell you're a dad. You can tell he's like recently. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. All right. Anyway, yeah, uh, but I don't have I don't have 13 kids like your tennis playing friend. Yeah, yeah. I hope he doesn't get them either. Uh, what else can I say? Um, anyway, uh, he only he should have two or three and then decide whether he wants to continue. <laughs> yeah, don't get them all at once. Uh, yeah. The weird thing is, while we can also learn religion, I think we learn a lot of other things besides that. Uh, we learn our language. We learn our culture. We learn rules of reality like hey if i knock this off the table will it fall oh yes it does if i fall off this chair will it hurt yes i understand pain i understand hunger thirst all that stuff rules of reality like homeostasis taking care of yourself how to treat other people cause and effect but mm -hmm. also ne nefarious things like hate you can learn hate from your parents you can learn hate from your culture you can pick up a lot of bad impressions prejudices misogyny bigotry a lot of those things like religion are taught to kids what do you think about that john well you you've hit another nail on the head there because of course what religions do is they divide us they divide mm -hmm. us into us and them yep. and then you demonize the them and you're on the way to war and victimization and the final solution and it's all yeah. needless because there's no evidence for any god apart from spaghetti <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we accept everyone. We're the only religion with the God back guarantee. If you, you don't, if you don't like pastafarianism after thirty days, go back to your old God. He'll likely take you back. <laughs> <laughs> I Start love eating it. rice instead. Oh man, I love it. There you go. Um, so I want to throw up a a, a, a quote uh, quickly from a fancy walrus, a fancy walrus, walrus who says religion is like racism. It's taught, not natural. I'm white and I had a friend from school from five to nine at that age who was black. And you know what? I didn't know it until I was 24. I just sat there one day and thought, hey, my old friend Jacob was black. I, have, I never thought about that. But as a kid, I just made friends with him because he was cool. We pretended to be Yoshi's together. Uh, Yoshi's a character in Mario that yeah. comes in a lot of different colors. And he was the black Yoshi and I was the white Yoshi and skin color meant nothing to us. 
as years went by, I would think about him from time to time, not that much as if it was so long ago, but it wasn't until it recently hit me that he was black because later in life, some people are, are uh, later in life, some people of all colors have been around, have made race such a issue that it's always the first thing I notice, no matter what or uh, how little I want to. What you're taught in youth really does affect you, but nothing is there when you begin with. And so I think it's tr a true point because um, when I was a kid, I never really considered like my skin color being an issue because I was being raised in California. Uh, I knew Mexicans. I was getting better at being Spanish speaking person than I was, you know, being what a black person was supposed to be. Like I, I, all these societal moles I was never experienced or exposed to. And it wasn't until I moved to Georgia that I realized, oh, there's like boxes that you're supposed to be in if you look a certain way or if you act a certain way or if you talk a certain way and you don't fit in any of them because you're you're an outsider. And I realized, well, I'm still in high school and I, I'm very, very emotionally driven to fall into like a social structure. And I spent like a time trying to fit into boxes that I couldn't fit into. It was very distressing. And through that whole process, it even informed my early adulthood where I realized, man, this is like something that I'm always thinking about. And like, there's a danger aspect too that now that I'm aware of, I don't want to not recognize anymore. Like, I don't want to consider like my race as something I don't have to think about because it's vitally important for me to be aware of that in certain circles in the states that I'm in. So it's just this constant dragging down that I never had to consider when I was a child. And I'm wondering, why is that the case? Is it because of me? No, it's because of the society that I'm in and I have to learn right. from it. And I learned some bad things from it and I learned some important bad things from it, but it's still bad things overall. And I wonder why we as a culture still hold on to these really bad tenets and paradigms. And we should get rid of them and stop teaching our kids that because you can live without it very effectively, like these right. things like religion and racism yeah. and hate. You can teach your kid hate. That's all my uh, uh, bottom line is. Dread, what do you think? Many do. Mm. Yeah. All you need is love. <laughs> Surprisingly a good band. Surprisingly a good band at this time. Yeah. Doubter Five, what do you think? I don't know. It's an artificial uh, division that we impose on each other. I mean, it's not necessary at all, of course. Right. Uh, kids prove that every day. Mm. Um, you know, uh, you don't have a black dog and a white dog that are at each other's throat because of the, their color. Right. We we come in a variety of colors. Hey, right. that's it. Deal with it. Yeah. It's kind of a good thing too. Yeah. John. To get back to the theme of atheism and whether we're born it, you've mm. only got to look around the world. I mean, once you come out of your parochial culture and look around the world, you realize that if that if you're born into a religion, You've got to accept that other people elsewhere are born into a different religion, and one of you must be wrong. Right. And and along that same lines, you can be born with different kinds of cultures that say women should wear hijabs and other cultures that say, actually, it's not a big deal if they do or they don't. They can decide on their own if they want to. But for one's <clears throat> culture, it's absolutely imperative that they do. And for other ones, oh, excuse my excuse my phone. Uh, the the other culture is like it's completely a non-issue. Yeah. Like these society, while religion is, is just a cast of societal rules that people are meant to follow, right? But that is entirely arbitrary, given the fact that we can live in this geopolitical culture that has many different kinds of cultures, and we can see yeah, yeah. that it's not uniform throughout. If that's the case, why don't we just have the best system? Why do we have all these other systems as well? Right. 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 And and you had it in California when you were growing up. Mm -hmm. And you'll find wherever you look in the world, it's the least religious places that are the most benevolent. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True, true that. Hey, I well, think we made it to the bottom of the half hour. Yeah, I think we need to take our break. Uh, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. So I can. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a second. ASK was founded in 2002 in our 20th year now and have over 1,000 members. We do have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. 
Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We can also we also get together for Tuesday evening Zoom meetings. If you'd like to join us via Zoom, no matter where you live, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You'll find us on Facebook, meetup.com or knoxvilleatheist.org, which is their website. You can also just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. One by where do you want to pick up? Yo, everybody was born an atheist, and so were you too. And isn't it a birthright? Isn't it an amazing thing that we can all appreciate? And when it all comes said and done, aren't we all basically atheists, at least to the majority of the gods that have been claimed to exist? There's not everyone who believes in all of them all at once. Doesn't that seem like it's commonsensical? Can't that seem like that's something we can all agree on? No, of course not, because this <laughs> is an internet show where we accept internet feedback, which means we're going to go into some contrary opinions. First contrary point, I'm going to throw it up to John Richards. You have the first say at this. First contrary point comes from Slimy Slug Zero on Reddit, who says, well, I'd say all humans are born agnostics, not atheists. Babies don't know what God is. Being an atheist means to not believe in any sort of God. How can a baby do that if babies don't even understand the concept of God yet? No, uh, we got John first, and then we'll go straight to Larry. John, what do you, what do you think? Not, Larry, you the get the old, not the old atheism versus agnosticism conflict. The, these are two contentious words. It depends who you are, how you define them. Mm. And being you know, an active atheist, I define atheism as a lack of belief in what other people claim mm. they have as their foundation for their religion. I don't claim that I can eliminate the possibility of there being a God, because of course, the universe isn't a cookie jar, using your American words. Thank you, can't, you. you can't turn it upside down and empty it and say, look, there's no God in here. <laughs> so it's not possible to eliminate the, the, the possibility that there is a God, and that's what I mean by atheism. But agnosticism is overlapping. You can be both because right, right. agnosticism means you don't know. Right. And, and you're not sitting on the fence. You just don't have the data necessary to make a decision to jump either side. So that's a, there is a slight difference there, but it's not a big one. And just a slight correction, when you say there's no metal fence, you just lack the information to know what to jump either side. The side that you're staying on is not believing. So like you either believe it or you don't believe it. And you're staying on the not believe side until you have knowledge. No, he was talking about agnosticism and you're using the word believe. Agnosticism so, is about knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, atheism is about belief. I'm an agnostic fine. atheist. Yes. Since sure. I don't know, but I also don't believe. Yes. But there are people that do uh believe and say they don't know so mm -hmm. it's just two different things you have to worry about knowledge versus belief correct and that shows you how much belief is actually a choice because they've even though they don't know they've chosen to believe one thing at a time mm. one thing at a time, one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here let me let me just make some quick clarification points between uh john and richard on the original question which was uh agnosticism atheist atheism for fans of the show refers to a statement of belief do you, if you believe in a god you're a theist if you don't believe in a god you're an atheist there's no middle ground you either are a theist or you're not a theist and we call non-theist atheists that's why we're saying all babies are born atheists Whereas agnosticism is a question of knowledge. Do you know if a God exists? Do you not know if a God exists? If you know a God exists, you're agnostic and you should be making a better noise than you are now because you should be a National Geographic. You should be in front of the president. But if you don't know that God exists, you're an agnostic. And you can be both agnostic and an atheist. Similarly, in the same way that you could be a Gnostic theist, you could be an agnostic atheist. Mm -hmm. and, and the question just becomes, um, it doesn't matter if someone calls themselves an agnostic, it doesn't immediately mean that they're not an atheist because you can be both. So why do people pull up that distinction? Anyway, Larry, go on ahead. And then we I was just going to say that I disagree with John on the belief is not a choice. You believe things because you're convinced they're true. Right. Now, you may be convinced for bad reasons or good reasons, but 
uh, you can't just convince your, you can't just make a choice to believe in like Santa Claus or the tooth fairy. It's not a choice. You're either convinced to believe something or not. Now you can do it without knowledge or with knowledge, but I don't, I don't believe it's a choice. Yeah. I, I concur. Now you I can think. choose whether or not you want to call yourself a believer or not, mm. but you can't just m make a decision to believe something that you don't believe in. That's another. And the, conver and the converse is true as well, right? Uh, a person who uh, has spent, you know, part of their life believing in some sort of a deity uh, doesn't come to unbelief overnight. Doesn't wake up one day and say, "I, I don't believe in God." Yeah. They can or try my, and tell themselves that, right. but all my friends are atheists. Over, so I'm going to decide not period. to believe. No, you yeah. can't do it's that. over a period of time that your your beliefs change, and you come to uh, a point where you can say, "I no longer believe," or "I do believe," but well, are transitory. That's a particularly American view because you have this thing called deconstructing. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Ah. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's still, well, I have so well, many. If you want to talk about umbrages, John, I have umbrage with that as a Canadian. That's still North America. <laughs> You're still part of us. Mexico's part of us. Brazil's still part of us. We're all on yeah, team. That's America. right. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, because yeah. I don't have a Mac, I yeah. can still use a computer. Guys, we can we can make this topic another show. And I think it'd be worthwhile a discovery to understand do we do we choose our beliefs? Because that's that's a heady topic. It really is. Mm -hmm. But how about we go into another uh, 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 feedback session from another okay. contrarian? Uh, this one I'd like to throw out to Doubter 5 to tackle first. And it's the idea of, let me see if I can read this quickly. Ah, how can we all be atheists if all religions come from different cultures? It's that argument. Anyway, here we go. Dual Dougie says, if it's true that we're born atheists, then why has every culture on earth even under no contact, created gods. It's certainly weird that every culture that has ever existed felt the pull to a higher power. Doubter five first, and then we go up to John. Oh, so you're on mute, my friend. And me next. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, most most Eastern religions are not God religions. Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, uh, Jainism. They don't believe in, they believe in maybe souls and, and ancestor worship, but they don't yep. believe in gods. Mm -hmm. And even the cultures that he's talking about, the ones that feel a pull to, to believe in a God, don't believe in the same God. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's just very troubling that he would make that argument. Uh, now, what I feel is a large part of it is that we all grow up with higher powers in our lives, our parents. And when their parents are gone, you still have that feel, that pull, that tug that you need a higher power looking after you that uh, takes the place of those, uh, those parents. And then we still call God our father in heaven, you know, mm. that type of thing. We're still following that uh, So I think it's kind of transparent why, we, why all the cultures would still look for a God, you know, when it's he is It's the easiest there. paradigm to stretch out to a supernatural sure. course, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, John, because you have to understand how a computer works for simulation theory to make sense to you. But everyone understands how a family works because we're products of a family. So it's just supernatural right. family. And the church power. takes advantage of that. They sure you do. know, the, the, the nuns are your sisters. The right. priests are your fathers. Yep. You know, and the, the church is your family. Right. They, and they get usurp the authority all with that. It. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They hijack it. Guardian mm -hmm. angels are your big brothers and big sisters. Mm -hmm. yeah. The priest or, is your father. The or nun a great is movie father. series brought by Marvel. Sorry, sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. John Richards, love to get your feedback. Well, it's not quite true that every culture has created a god. Very true. <clears throat> Just anthropologists have studied indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And there are, in Brazil, for example, there's the Piraha, who not only have no religion, no god, but they don't have any numbers either. <laughs> so it's... Um, it, you know, it's it's a bit of a sweeping statement to claim that every culture has invented it. Is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. It's very true. Uh, particularly the ones that Christianity took over or try to sell as a comparable model to why they're inferior and we're better. Yes, mm -hmm. but if you look at the grand scheme of things, it's a bald-faced lie to say that every single culture has. If mm -hmm. anything, even if that's true, even if that's accurate, it's only every culture that we know of, which introduces yourself to a black swan fallacy, where it's like, there is no such things as black swans because I've never seen one. It's like, that's not a good argument to say mm -hmm. that every case is as you say, because we haven't looked at the whole entire sample size yet, right? 
Like, yeah, everyone right. votes Democrat. I've never seen anyone vote Republican. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mind, mind you, I yeah. went to New Zealand where the uh, black swans are supposed to exist, and I didn't see any there either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dread Pirate, what's up? Yeah, well, I was going to say that uh, while not all cultures may have uh, religious beliefs, uh, we all do have brains, and our brains are hardwired for agency detection. That Ooh. is something that is innate in our cognition, our cognitive well skills Poor and Bob. abilities. A rustle in the breeze, is it something that might eat me or is it the wind? Mm -hmm. Better think it's the thing that's going to eat me Correct. Uh, and be wrong than think it's the um, the wind and, and be lunch. So um, it's just a part of, of uh, how our brains work. So it's right. not a far stretch to consider that we may look at other things and believe that they have agency. Right. And my, you know, Dred, that's, that's a really good point. It feeds me into this because you're talking about matters of evolution. I also find that culture is a product of evolution as well. And so when I am born in a culture that is Christian or has evolved to be very Christian, like how we are in the West, then it's not a surprise to me that I could be born and believe that I'm a Christian over a period of time in the same way that people who are born in more Islamic areas or evolved into more Islamic regions, they're born to be Islamic or, mm -hmm. or Jainist or, or Confucianist, et cetera. And my point is, I, when I say we're all born atheists and someone brings up, well, every culture comes up with a higher power, I'm like, so what? That's the product of the culture that was already pre-existing that caused that people to to continue to foster that culture. But however, we have seen in multiple instances, even looking around the world, that if you completely remove that, if if you look at cultures who have no contact religion, they can you can have examples like that. Or you could have regions that get taken over by the more popular religion. That also happens as well. The fact that these cultures exist with these higher powers is more of a product of like the history of how these cultures have, you know, generated in the first place. And the fact that we can come up with in our own mind state is evolutionary bias because it's what we tend to do when we look at the unknown. We tend to anthropomorphize it or give it qualities that are beyond just a natural force. What do you think, John? Well, it's it's a product of uh, being social animals. Mm. Every type of social animal needs a leader, even if it's only the fastest wildebeest that leads the herd. And what, what uh, humans do, and, and possibly some chimpanzees, is project that, the leader, into the sky. Mm -hmm. So that there is, you know, even, even when your earthly body is gone, you've still got this father figure up there that you can rely on. Mm. It's... I also want to throw this out too before we get to the next topic. These, these ideas that we have of the afterlife and the structure of heaven are always very beneficial to the believer in, in the ego uh, sense. Like a holy father who loves his son. I'm a, I'm a guy. That means I got a dad, which means my dad's powerful, which means I'm powerful because I'm the product of power. I like this. This is going to be the story that I move on. Oh, and you mean... The supernatural being who created the universe is my family member. That's pretty awesome. Like my dad's awesome. I have a cool dad. Everyone wants that. But you never get the one where it's like reality as we know it is just a slaughterhouse. And when you die, you're, you, it's just your soul getting ready to be chopped up for a meal for some you know, major feast down the road. Because a lamb, if you think about a lamb in a, in a farm, they don't know anything outside of their farm in the same way like humans don't know anything outside of our planet. Or we, we're slowly developing, but we've never been off our our plan onto another planet in the same way that a lamb visits another slaughterhouse and when the slams get taken away it's sort of like when we die and it just looks like our bodies stop working it's like well where do our souls go where do our where does our mentality go where does tyrone go after he dies we always want to think of something really great and appeasing to us we never consider a more darker afterlife that could be just as valid because we don't know where we're drawing these straws from i find it just very telling that we always pick the most uh, 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 attitude massaging yeah 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 it's so biased nobody, it's... nobody wants an evil teddy bear no one wants an evil teddy bear we always want the best thing that works for us and so it's just so saccharine is all i'm saying it's just so tellingly saccharine so tellingly meant to appease us about the concept of death when in reality if we were to just think about what death actually is 
and what the implications of a, a reality where we never die would be. It's like, it's not that bad of this concept. It really isn't. I, and I just wish we had more time to come to terms with death in a more mature and honest way than, than lying to ourselves with these really clearly fleeting, no foundational rules of reality that actually make us believe terrible things. Dread, I'm sorry for that spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, he was in full thank you i was just gonna say uh i mean no more uh, nowhere is it more glaring than in uh in western countries that mm. uh that religion is largely due to our cultural upbringing um because you don't see white people walking around wearing turbans right or identifying as sikhs you don't i've never ever seen a white person you know um wearing a wearing a turban or uh, i mean i I've, I've seen women uh white women wear uh you know uh, shadowers or uh, uh niqabs or hijabs i should say the ones that are more revealing but uh i've never been able to uh, you know assume whether they're muslim or uh you know some people of course adopt islam as their religion but, uh, you know, certainly you, I've never, ever seen, and I put it to you guys, have you ever seen uh, a non-Indian wearing a turban or identifying as a uh, Sikh? I only have two examples, but yeah, I've seen that. But Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But they, I mean, it's you can adopt the religion is all I'm saying. Larry. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but I, I'm, you know, the point was that it is culturally driven, right? Right, right. Like my sister's yeah. Muslim. And so she, she wears a job and, and she was born in St. Thomas. So like it, that is not a common jump, but like she adopted the culture and now she is, mm -hmm. you know, over there. Daughter five, what do you think? Oh, you said white guy. No, I have no examples for white people, but I've seen it. <laughs> this is mic's I... off. Your mic's Larry, off your, there, but Larry, your mic's off. Yes, one of the DJs on our station is, yep. is a white person who has is a Sikh, yep, who wears yeah. the, the turban and, and all that, okay. and a uh, very nice guy. But my okay. point is, there are outliers. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, people who adopt religions who aren't born in society, but that doesn't belie your your basic uh, assumption that people are born into religion and generally is controlled by the religion by the region you were born in. Right. And that doesn't impact whether or not you're born an atheist. Like we live in these two realities where they're both compatible. Like you're born an atheist mm -hmm. and you might be born in a culture that's religious. And guess what? You're probably going to become that religion's or that culture's religion. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame because your birthright is your atheism. And you yeah. shouldn't rest on it, but you should understand that that's a good position to have when everyone else around you is following a dogma that may not necessarily be scientifically or reasonably based. John, what do you, what do you got before? Well, this is a, a an issue which has been rumbling along for hundreds of years. Mm. And it's not just whether people are born atheist or theists of whatever flavor, but also whether they are born into a political party. Yes. And and I've got a quote here from a Gilbert and Sullivan opera that was popular in the Victorian era, in which one of the characters sings a song that goes, I often think it's comical, fa la la, how nature always does contrive, fa la la, that every boy and every gal that's born into the world alive is either a little liberal or else a little conservative. Nice. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, and here's awesome. the problem. they were poking fun. Right. <clears throat> And the political course, system yeah. in this country at that time and that is really? true it's absolutely true because if you were to look at like a heat map of population density across the united states of america at least the areas where there are the most people the most diverse people living with each other and we're talking like millions of people living like in the same town or whatever or like or nearby the same area those tend to be the bluest areas because it's the people that have access to most likely the highest education really good pay cultural mm -hmm uh mixtures different very yeah. little in the way of like well this guy's this guy i'm this thing it's like no per personal identity is broken down it's just people existing with each other in a very harmonious state whereas the ones where it's just like well there's a person there's a person across like this entire state those tend to be the red estates because they have the least yeah. access to different cultures the least access yeah. to different new ideas and those tend to be very conservative that's red not are rural it's, it's exactly tends to be the case it is yeah, it is exactly yeah. i was just going to make that point people who live in a city 
meet all sorts of other different types of people. And yeah. they're more tolerant than people who stay in their own little village somewhere amongst a load of farming <laughs> crops and animals. Yeah, and are afraid to lose what they have, right? Yes. So we'll be conservative to make sure that isn't the case. Whereas ones were like very considerate of the plights of other people because they see them on a regular basis. And they're like, we need to come up with a system to help people. Like, can we come up with something that like improve their liberties and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm not saying one... Actually, I'm saying one's better than the other, but I'm also saying it is a product both in both cases of culture. It is a product of culture. And we are impacted by that in many different ways. Dred, I got a question for you. All this right. Is anonymous. And she says, even though it's technically right to call newborns atheists, I don't really like where this is going. The absence of something because of capabilities does not mean that it's a good state or something that should be pursued. What do you think about that? Yeah, we're born atheists, but that's not necessarily a good thing because you shouldn't think of that as a good state because you lack the capability of believing in God. And it shouldn't be something that should be pursued. Atheism may not necessarily be something to be pursued. What do you think <laughs> oh, John Rich is excited, Dad. What do you got? Yeah, yeah. It's it's I mean, that's a pretty hard statement to make. I mean, that's a that's a broad claim, and I don't see what support she might have uh for making it in the first place. I, I, it's a non sequitur. Okay, go ahead, John. John, it's going on, John. Go ahead. I can't hold it. <laughs> this person obviously thinks that atheism is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because it's because it ends in ism, and she hmm. thinks it's an ideology. It right. isn't. We don't have any doctrine. We don't wish to impose anything on anybody. Right. Right, right. It's not something you pursue. It's just a state of being yes. lacking, you know, the belief in a God. It's like when you yes. move yes. that, what's left behind this the whole, no... or the shape that's left behind is an atheist. When you take off your clothes, you're naked. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's good to pursue being naked, but not there's, in, there's in the no place. rituals, <laughs> no taboos. We live we live in a wonderful, peaceful condition right. where we can we can do pretty much what we like and if you have standards it is something that is worth getting rid of if you can be shown otherwise my biggest complaint about the bible is god shows up all the time helping people left and right in person as a dove flaming, uh, flaming bush drops angels down left and right always willing to cause miracles left and right but mm -hmm. since the time of the bible is very the world's champion at hide and seek even to the point where the devil is willing to like go and be like, hey, you want to just come down and like harass some of your followers a little bit? Do you want to try that together? It's like, ah, I haven't done that in years. Like, okay, fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. These guys, the devil and God, they know each other exists, but God doesn't like the devil, right? Even though he invites him to heaven for bettings, right? If God gave us the same level of evidence that the devil had, where it's like, just let us know you exist, that immediately cures atheism. Immediately, I would be not an atheist anymore. Maybe I wouldn't be a Christian, but I wouldn't be an atheist. I definitely would know that a God exists. Now the question just becomes whether or not I worship that being and follow its tenets. That is a completely different question whether or not I believe, but you can be punished for lack of belief. <clears throat> you can be punished explicitly in the Bible for not believing in that God. So why don't you just make yourself a parent? Because then you would get rid of the atheists. And now it's a question of on the tenets of the obvious rules that you hand delivered us, now we know whether we should follow them or not. And based on that decision-making, then you would be able to have better grounds to punish us if we don't yeah, follow yeah. that. That's all we're asking for. Just give us the same evidence the devil had. Daughter Five, what do you think? Well, yeah, uh, who was it on the road to Damascus and you know Jesus oh. appeared to him? Give us the same evidence, you know, appear to us. It should be the easiest yeah. thing in the world for a deity have a, to do. Yeah, have a know? Twitter account. That's a <laughs> yeah. important discuss. We'd be really yeah. helpful. And as, yeah. I've been asked off uh, very frequently, uh, what kind of evidence would you believe? You know, uh, and I'm with Matt Dillahunty on this one. He says that uh, God would know. Yeah. I mean, if, if God is all knowing, He would know the evidence that I would need for, uh, to be convinced. Right. Yeah. And He's not giving it to me. Either He doesn't exist, or He doesn't want me to know He exists. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, or he may why, be why not? in a way where you can't be convinced, in which case that's not my problem anymore. That's God's problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If God right. wants to convince me and he made me convincible, he would know how to do it. And he hasn't done it yet. That tells me one of three things either he doesn't care, he can't do it, or he made me so I can't be convinced. So, like, not my problem either way in all three of those categories. Yeah. 
let's move forward with our lives. A blue tick wouldn't do it. No, and it only costs eight bucks a month, apparently. In fact, yes. I think I think Elon Musk actually took that program away. You get them now for free. So, like, come on, guys, what's going on? Just make a Twitter account. Uh, Dred, do you have anything else to add on that question or the idea of atheism is not something that should be pursued? No, not really. I mean, I agree completely with John. Um, you know, yeah, it, there's really not much to say about it. I, I think this is a silly question, actually. <laughs> okay, uh, we got five minutes left in the show. How and we had more comments, but you know what? It's always good that we keep it easy on Larry's part because I don't want him to do extra editing. So how about we just do a roundtable? Things we'd like to plug. For me, you can check out. Oh, go ahead, Larry. Oh, I was just going to say it's not so much for the. I'm sorry, the extra editing is that I hate to cut anything. Says. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much yeah. quality. Content. Yeah, what do I cut? <laughs> I get you. I get you. All right, so you won't cut anything because we're going to end a little early today, or we're ending exactly on time. And so I would say if you like this topic that we're having, this open discussion, feel free to check out uh, atheism on or athe r slash atheism and look for the topic, All Babies Are Born Atheists, where this conversation is ongoing as we speak. And for more of my content, check it out on Let's Chat on YouTube. And feel free to check in and other shows or leave a comment. We'll be happy to go over it over next week's show. In fact, I know we didn't do it in the last couple of episodes. We will do it in the next episode. So thank you so much for all your attention and time. Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, I uh, have a, a, a YouTube channel, Mind Pirate. Uh, of course, YouTube has given us all handles now. So all you have to do is uh, check out YouTube at Mind Pirate. And you will find me there. I live stream this uh, particular show at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I also, when I'm available, uh, hop on for Global Atheist News Review at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, where I join John Richards and other guests in talking topics of uh, religious nature. Nice. Yeah, I just found out about this handle thing. Yeah, when I want to do yeah, oh, it's chat, cool. let's chat. That's yeah. that's all my vids. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Daughter five. Oh, we'll wait for you. John Richards, tell me about the land of chaos. <laughs> it's settling down. <laughs> we we've had a prime minister now who's lasted a whole three weeks. <laughs> but yeah, congrats. My my stuff is on um, Free Thought Channel on YouTube, and uh, as Dred said, one of the shows that we do is. Global Atheist News Review, or I'm renaming it Views on the News. And we have a wonderful panel, including you, Ty, and you, Dredd, of wise and witty people who give mm. their opinions about the things that have happened over the previous seven days, as reported in Global Atheist News itself. And there's some <clears> really <throat> hairy stuff this week to talk about. The, the, uh, the leaders of, I think it's Afghanistan, have, yeah, the Taliban have now specified that oh, them. Uh, chopping off hands and and other forms of torture and execution are back. They've, they've decided that uh, they want to enforce Sharia law once more. Don't know what you're going to say about that later on today. And uh, there's, if you look at the clips of what's going on in Iran at the moment, there's so many women not wearing their hijab and there's a lovely little video of this guy who gives a, who gives a fist bump to them as they're walking down the street. They accept the fist bump and he turns his hand over and there's a sweet and then they take the sweet and it, it's all happening. So that was that? that was the most pleasant way that story could have ended. I, I, I was expecting many, many terrible things. Yeah, he me turned too. Over his hand <laughs> and like something bad. I was like, no. Oh, candy. That's great. I yes. hope they got it. I hope they got a cookie. <laughs> yes anyway yes. that or five <laughs> or a biscuit yeah, or a biscuit he got it in <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject my youtube channel handle is at doubter five you can find my book atheism what's it all about on, on amazon uh, and if you're having trouble recovering from religion, there's help for you at recoveringfromreligion.org. Check it out. I'm sure they have some way that will leave your problem, some of your problems anyway. And there are a lot of problems from leaving religion. 
Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye.